Welcome back to our monthly ultrasound case series. Each month I review a clinical case where ultrasound impacted clinical care. As always, email me with any questions or concerns at gzon.iu.edu. This case was evaluated in the emergency department by Dr. Derek Oaxaca and his attending. This case starts out with a 37-year-old male presenting to the emergency department by a medic secondary or severe right flank pain. He reports this started soon after strain to have a bowel movement. His history is significant for kidney stones, and he said his symptoms were consistent with his kidney stone pain. His vitals were remarkable for an extremely elevated blood pressure of 240 over 152, yet he was in significant pain reported being non-compliant with his hypertensive medications. On physical, the patient was in moderate distress and appeared unable to get comfortable. He did have tinnitus to percussion in the right flank with an otherwise benign abdominal examination. The management of this case brings up a diagnostic dilemma that we all encounter frequently. A stone is clearly on the differential with the patient telling us this feels like his previous stones. So if we were thinking stone, which diagnostic test is indicated, if any? The practice variation for patients with your current kidney stone is quite variable. Do I think we can all agree that cross-sectional imaging is overutilized when the case is straightforward and uncomplicated? Given that this patient had never required intervention and had always passed his stones on his own, ultrasound was selected. Here is the imaging that was first obtained on the patient's affected side. This image is a long axis view with good visualization of the kidney, liver tip, and Morrison's pouch. Take a little time to look at and interpret this image. I always recommend obtaining imaging in two orthogonal planes and the short axis view of the right kidney is shown. Once again, take a second to interpret the imaging. The benefit of the human body is that we often have a structure for comparison. With that in mind, imaging of the left kidney was obtained. Here is the long axis view. To help make comparison easier, here is a side-by-side -side view of both kidneys. You might be looking for a subtle abnormality to explain the patient's symptoms. However, I can help by telling you that the right kidney is essentially normal. There is not evidence of hydronephrosis to suggest an obstructing renal stone. The patient remained quite uncomfortable even with aggressive pain medication. Without a clear etiology to his pain, the treatment team felt it prudent to expand the workup. Given the patient's distress and his severely elevated blood pressure, a CTA was obtained. His CTA identified a cause for his symptoms and displayed evidence of a right renal artery dissection. The two images are representative cuts showing the dissection, both with an arrow identifying the pathology. After the dissection was identified, nicardipine was started to achieve a gold blood pressure. IR was consulted and took the patient for a renal artery stent. After IR, the patient was admitted to the ICU where he did well and was subsequently discharged a few days later. Nearly every case that we have reviewed as part of this series focuses on pathology identified on ultrasound. This case is unique because the point of care ultrasound study showed the appearance of a normal kidney. There was no evidence of hydronephrosis to suggest the presence of a kidney stone as a cause for the patient's symptoms. The normal renal ultrasound brought doubt to the initial leading diagnosis of renal colic and allowed the team to quickly pivot and arrive at his true diagnosis. We obviously are not going to cover renal artery dissection in depth, yet this case gives us the opportunity to review renal ultrasound. As I mentioned earlier, there's incredible practice variation when it comes to the evaluation of potential kidney stones. I am a firm believer that every patient with a history of kidney stones and flank pain does not require a CT scan every time they present to the emergency department. CT imaging gives us a more complete picture but also carries increased cost, radiation, and length of stay. It is important to understand that ultrasound is not attempting to identify the stone because 99% of the time we cannot visualize it. We are looking for what the stone causes, obstruction and subsequent backup of urine causing hydronephrosis. Here is a video showing moderate hydronephrosis and hydroureter in a patient with an obstructing stone compared to the ultrasound obtained in our case. In order to understand hydronephrosis classification, we must first understand basic renal anatomy. Here is a diagram I made showing relevant anatomy, the cortex, pyramids, renal sinus, and ureter are all depicted. When we describe the degree of hydronephrosis, we look at the minor and major calyces of the kidney. Mild hydronephrosis shows fluid accumulation in the proximal ureter, renal sinus, and the major calyces. Moderate hydronephrosis shows dilation of the minor calyces. The more severe the hydronephrosis, the more black fluid you see that progresses deeper into the kidney. Rob Ferry made this slide and it does a great job showing the progression of severity of hydronephrosis. The normal bright hyperechoic renal pelvis is progressively replaced by urine as the hydronephrosis becomes more severe. The classification of severe hydronephrosis is important to understand because it occurs when you get thinning of the cortex secondary to hydronephrosis. The thinning takes time to develop and is something that should not be present with an acute presentation from a stone. These two pictures show great examples of cortical thinning. 
If this is present, you should think of a pathology resulting in a long-standing obstruction. Now that you're all experts, let's review a few examples of hydronephrosis. To help appreciate anatomy, I identified dilation in the major calyces in the ureter and the still shots on the right. Here's another example where we can clearly see dilation of the renal sinus that extends into the major and minor calyces representing moderate hydronephrosis. Here's a more subtle example where the majority of dilation appears to be more focused within the major calyces representing mild hydronephrosis. While renal ultrasound is incredibly easy to perform and interpret, there are a few pitfalls. I show this image because we often see kidneys with this appearance mistaken as hydronephrosis. However, if you look closely, the renal sinus is not dilated. Instead, you see dark structures in the renal parenchyma that does not originate in the sinus. These structures are known as the renal pyramids and are normal. The ability to see these is variable and depends upon hydration, age, and fat content. Here's another example of a pitfall and it shows a picture of color flow depicting the renal vasculature. If there is any concern that a subtle hypochoic area might be hydronephrosis, use color flow to ensure that the area is not a vessel. The last pitfall clearly shows another explanation of a patient's flank pain, a large aortic aneurysm. If your patient has risk factors for a AAA, it takes about 15 seconds to quickly assess the aorta for dilation. Hopefully this case, along with the examples and discussion, have shown the value and utilization of renal ultrasound for kidney stones. Utilizing ultrasound results in less radiation, decreased length of stay, and reduced cost. I think additional support for utilizing ultrasound comes from a paper published in the New England Journal a few years ago that showed no difference in high-risk diagnoses, complications, serious adverse events, pain scores, return ED visits, or hospitalizations when ultrasound was compared to CT. Additionally, it showed nearly identical sensitivity of point-of-care ultrasound compared to radiology-performed ultrasound. So for your next uncomplicated stone, take the ultrasound in and see if it can help. Thanks for watching. Continue using ultrasound to help take care of patients. And as always, email me with any questions or concerns.